fire and fury in America as an explosive war of words erupts between Donald Trump and his former soulmate Steve Bannon. Could this be the spat that drives Trump's electoral base away? We'll ask Bannon's right-hand man and a woman from Team Trump 2020. Hello, good evening. Even for a man as combative as Donald Trump, today's statement left little to the imagination. He denounced his former White House strategist, Steve Bannon, as a man who had lost his mind, who had nothing to do with Trump or indeed his presidency. The president may be playing with fire. Steve Bannon, thought by many to be the man who delivered him the presidency, knows things about him very few others do, and he has a powerful base on the right in which to relay them. The statement came from the president after the release of extracts from a new book, Fire and Fury, by Michael Wolff. In it, Bannon describes a meeting between Donald Trump Jr. and a Russian lawyer during the 2016 campaign as treasonous and unpatriotic. It looks, it sounds like an ordinary Trump spat, but these questions go far deeper. Who will the Republican base now see as their leader, and this in a midterm election year? The relationship between Donald Trump and Steve Bannon is one of the most curious in modern America. If Donald Trump made winning the presidency look easy, Steve Bannon, some will tell you, was the strategic brain behind the campaign. He was also the ideological rump of Trump's Make America Great Again strategy, introducing him to those on the right who had become a proud and vocal base amongst his supporters. On what President Donald Trump promised the American people like many of Trump's advisers, he didn't last the course of the transition to power. If Bannon was the one person who, rumor had it, was allowed in the Oval Office without a tie, he was nevertheless unceremoniously fired from his job in the White House last autumn. But anyone who thought Bannon would go quietly couldn't have been further from the truth. He backed Roy Moore for the Alabama Senate race last December and is encouraging hard-right candidates to take on sitting Republican senators in almost every seat that's up for the midterm elections this November, part of what he sees as his broader populist war against the Republican establishment. Bannon remains a powerful force in the alt-right news site Breitbart, which could yet turn its editorial power against the president. The bigger question this schism raises is what happens now to the base? Do they stick loyally with their leader, Trump himself, or realign with the ideology that brought them to him in the first place, the now free agent that is Steve Bannon? Well, the spectacular breakdown of communication between the two men was inevitably the focus of questions at the Daily White House press briefing this evening. Here's Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders responding to a question about whether Donald Trump Jr. had committed treason. Uh, I think that is a ridiculous accusation and one that I'm pretty sure we've addressed many times from here before. And if that's in reference to comments made by Mr. Bannon, I'd refer you back to the ones that he made previously on 60 Minutes where he called uh, the collusion with Russia about this president a total farce. So I think I would uh, look back at that. If anybody's been inconsistent, it's been him. Certainly hasn't been the president or this administration. So the it's been reported that he was furious when these reports first came out about what Bannon was quoted as saying. Is that an accurate depiction? Uh, I think um, furious, disgusted would probably certainly fit when you uh, make such outrageous claims and completely false claims against the president, uh, his administration. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, so what's going on here and where does this leave the president? Raheem Kassam is a close advisor to Steve Bannon and the UK editor of his Breitbart News. Mika Mosbacher is a campaigner for President Trump who works on the Trump 2020 Advisory Committee. It's great to have you both. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Raheem, I'm going to ask you, first of all, to just take us inside mm -hmm. Steve Bannon's mind. You know him well. Does Bannon really believe that Don Jr.'s meeting with a Russian lawyer was treasonous? I think when you look at how this book was written, really how any book like this is written, you know, the author will have posed certain questions to the interview subjects. The interview subjects 
will give answers. And some of those questions are hypothetical. Uh, for instance, they will come with a context uh, such as, if this was discussed in that meeting at this time and it went on to do X, Y, Z, does it mean it's treasonous and, and what have you? Uh, and, and, and people will give honest answers to those things. I think that's what happened here. I'm not sure you're getting the full context of the conversation, but I will say this as well. Uh, Steve Bannon was, uh, was in the Pentagon during the Reagan administration. He's a naval uh, officer. He understands what the, uh, what the Russia threat really is uh, outside of this sort of uh, uh, media obsession over uh, how many Facebook ads they took out and so on and so forth. So he understands what the geopolitical threat is, and I think he takes that very seriously. Seriously, so when 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 he remarks that you know these people shouldn't probably have not been in Trump Tower taking meetings with campaign senior campaign staff without lawyers in the room, I would say that's a fair thing to say. And did he say that at the time? Did he say that to Trump and his son? Well, I'm not. I, you know, I wasn't privy to the what was going on in Trump Tower at the time. I don't know uh, who learned what when. Uh, in in that, I, I can't imagine he would have stayed silent if he knew that that was going on at the time. Let me. Um, but again, you know, coming. Yes, go ahead. Let me just ask you a couple of other things that Michael Wolff um, writes, which you, you might be able to shed some light on, though I understand you went um, with him throughout mm. the whole campaign. He said that Trump's ultimate goal had never been to win. Um, was that your understanding? He called him befuddled Trump, disbelieving Trump, and then horrified Trump, quoting uh, Bannon each time. Yeah, I think there was a point in which um, the, the campaign advisers had sort of conditioned the, uh, the candidate, Trump, to think and believe uh, that he wasn't going to win, that he didn't have a path to victory. Uh, one of the stories that's pretty well known over here is on the uh, weekend, uh, the, the, the Bully, Bish, Billy, <laughs> Billy Bush tape weekend, mm. tongue twister. Um, you, uh, you had the entire team sat around in Trump Tower and the president-elect, uh, sorry, the president-candidate uh, back then went around the room saying, uh, you know, what are my chances? And everybody was saying, well, zero, 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 this zero. This was the access And he asked Bannon Hollywood what he tape, thought his it? chances were. That's correct. And Bannon said at the time, 100% metaphysical certitude that you're going to win. And at the time, the president didn't believe, didn't believe him. What? Candidate Trump did not believe uh, Steve at that time. So I think, I think the president had been conditioned, uh, especially because people were jumping off the boat. Don't forget, the RNC was condemning him. Paul Ryan was condemning him. Chris Christie was condemning him. You know, everybody was leaping off the ship well, at that point. And there was only one person that stood by him, and that was, that was, that was Steve Bannon. Let, let me just ask you one more on that line. Uh, this has come out in the book that Trump never wanted to finance his own campaign, far from it, that it was Steve Bannon who encouraged him to do so and that Trump merely loaned money to it, some $10 million, which he then got straight back. Is that right? I don't know if he got it straight back. I, I, I would imagine that nobody really wants to finance their own campaign. Um, but going into uh, going into a situation where Steve Bannon joined the campaign, they were double digits down in all the battleground states. They knew they needed to spend money. Well, where was the money going to come from fastest? Was it going to be going around the country doing big donor lunches and meetings and all this kind of stuff? Or was it going to be asking the candidate to put his hands in his deep pockets and, and, and stump some of the money up himself? I think that's perfectly reasonable. Uh, and it's also perfectly reasonable, by the way, why you might not want to do that as a candidate mm. if you're being convinced by so many people around you that you're onto a loser. The good thing about it is uh, he was convinced to do it. He did spend the money. Steve did work on the campaign okay. and they did win. Let me bring Mika in. Uh, thank you for being so patient. I just want to get to the bottom of some of those um, quotes from Steve Bannon. Um, Mika, what do you make of some of these quotes that Trump never wanted to win, that he was horrified when he did, uh, that Bannon called it, and I quote here, the broke dick campaign. Um, this was a man who was never intending to be the president, never thought he could be the president. I disagree totally. First of all, um, anointing uh, Steve Bannon, the kingmaker, is a gross over-exaggeration. If anything, Trump won because Trump outperformed and outworked 17 candidates. He did over 250 rallies, and I've been part of five political campaigns, and most candidates are very scripted and kept in sort of a bubble. President Trump has some of the best political instincts I've ever seen. 
He was off script. What he said in terms of populism was all Trumpism. So, and like all campaigns, there were advisors that came and went, and they had certain roles at certain times. Mika, but Trump would have won 2016 without Steve Bannon. Well, let's absolutely. Throw it, let's throw it um, forward then. You're on the 2020 campaign, and before that, of course, we've got the yes. midterms. Are you worried that Bannon and Breitbart, if you like, will pit itself against Trump now, putting up candidates of the hard right, which may make it very hard for him to keep the Senate? I don't think Breitbart wants to get labeled fake news like CNN. Uh, first of all, I look at the RNC. They've raised over $130 million in a non-election year, and 70% of that are small donors. That tells me the base is sticking with him. Look at the rally in Pensacola on the eve of the Alabama elections. He had over thousands of people there, and several people waited outside in the rain. Raheem? Uh, Steve Bannon had broken with the president over Roy Moore because the president initially re uh, supported Luther Strange. Okay. So we already were seeing a slight break in that relationship. Raheem, do you think that the base now goes with Bannon or does it stick with Trump? <clears throat> I think it sticks all together, and I, I think Mika is mischaracterizing what's going on here. I think if you look at what Steve Bannon is doing, if you look at Breitbart News, it's still the only news site in the world and in the United States that, that truly endorses. You see, we don't hide our political affiliations at Breitbart News. Um, it's, it's the only site that endorses the, the MAGA agenda, and Mika, I don't think it needs to be an either-or situation. I think you're right. Uh, when Donald Trump is himself on the yeah. stump, he has the best political instincts of any Anybody in the past couple of decades, at least in but, order to build that base and get those people out voting and get them to the rallies and all it, that kind of stuff. So I don't think I don't think you need to worry about that. And throwing threats around about calling Breitbart fake news if we don't toe the because, line is, is, is it, it's kind of silly. But, We're not on different sides I, here. This is a man who's I'm accused the president of the line. Treason. I'm saying fair reporting. Okay, yeah. so this is a man. Oh, the treason comment is outrageous. Can they make up? comment. I agree with Sarah Huckabee Sanders. That's not, that's not a report, but that wasn't a report on Breitbart News. That's a, that's a comment made by a private individual to a book. You can't, you can't conflate the two. Okay. Thank you both very much indeed. Thanks for uh, coming on. Good point.